So remember last week how we pretended that Friday and Wednesday were the same day? Let's do it again. Hey everyone, it's Kayla, and today I have a Friday Reads and a Top 5 Wednesday again. I know, I'm having computer issues and that's why things are so late. However, I'm pre-filming the next Top 5 Wednesday, so that will be uploaded on time. Hallelujah! Lainey at Ginger Reads Lainey created Top 5 Wednesday and a bunch of people have joined. It's awesome. It's a great way for the community to come together. I left all of the channels to Top 5 Wednesdayers below. You should go check them out because everyone is awesome. The Top 5 Wednesdayers decided that we should do the top five books I read in 2013. So after much nail biting and hair pulling and oh my god, freak out sessions. I came up with a list that I'm pretty happy about. So let's get to the list. And then afterwards, I will do a quick Friday reads for you discussing what I'm currently reading. Top five books of 2013. Most of these I did read on my Kindle, so I apologize about not being able to show you a physical book, but I will insert a picture somewhere here. And as soon as I can figure out the new iMovie, you know, That'd be great. Number five, Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. And yes, that's how you pronounce it because I Googled it. I had read Gone Girl last year by her and was completely blown away by the disturbingness of the book. I love the writing style. I loved the gritty characters and the oh my God moments. And I just had to read more of Gillian Flynn. So I picked up Dark Places. And I think I liked it better than Gone Girl, if that's possible. The story is told in multiple perspectives. It's about Libby Day, an adult that when she was a child, her whole family was massacred and everyone thought it was her brother and he went to jail and she dives back into the investigation. Meanwhile, every other chapter takes place on the day of the murders from the perspectives of her brother and her mother and it's just so intriguing and it was a page turner and I loved it so much and I highly recommend that you check it out. But fair warning, there are disturbing elements and adult-like elements and things like that, but it is just mind-blowing. Coming in at number four on my top five of 2013 is The House of Hades by Rick Riordan. The book was so good. It's my favorite of the Heroes of Olympus series so far. It was just so touching, so heartbreaking, so adventurous, so everything, all of the feels and I just loved it so much. The characters, and I can't really go into summary obviously because it's book four of a series without spoiling anything, but <sighs> bravo Rick Riordan, always doing things right. Number three on my list is The Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey, and I loved this book so much, and a lot of people have mixed reviews on it, I've noticed on booktube, and I know it's overhyped and stuff, but it deserves it in my opinion. I just loved the sci-fi adventure. I loved the devastation contained within it, and I thought it was unique, and I can't wait for the sequel, The Infinite Sea, coming out in 2014, and the writing style was beautiful, and I just love this book. And this book will always be my baby, because this is the first book I kind of talked about when I joined booktube, so I will always have a special place for it in my heart. If you haven't checked it out yet, because you're worried, I'd check it out. I think you can download the first 70 pages as a sample. I just thought it was different. Loved it. Yeah. Coming in at number two on my top five of 2013 is The Bitter Kingdom by Ray Carson, which is the third and final book of the Girl in Fire and Thorns trilogy. It is a YA fantasy series. If you've been with me for a while, you know I rave about this series all the time. I should probably stop talking about it. But yes, the conclusion to this series was just the feels. I just love the characters and how they grew throughout the series and it was just such a good conclusion. This is how you do conclusions guys. Check this series out if you like kick-ass characters, if you like epic world building, if you love magic and fantasy and adventure, check it out. My top book of 2013 this should come as no surprise to anyone. Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. I cannot describe how I cannot describe how much this book makes me feel like emotions and oh, 
probably the best conclusion to a series next to Deathly Hollows, in my opinion. I was like so satisfied with this ending and it was just so perfect and I loved the characters and the ends that they all got and that epilogue. She killed me with the epilogue. Ugh. It was just so perfect. I was just really, really, really happy with the ending and tears. I never cry when I read, but I gotta admit, I shed a few. Shed a few. All right, guys, so that's it for my top five of 2013. I know I only had one adult book. Well, that will hopefully change in 2014 because I want to read more adult books in 2014. But yes, those are my top five. And I was going to do a top 13 of 2013. My good friend Estelle at Autumn Entha just did this tag, uh, her 2013 reads and 20 superlatives. And it is an awesome video. I'll link it below, but I plan to do that tag, which is kind of like a spin on your 2013 reads. You get to talk about more books. I highly suggest that you go check out that video because it's awesome and stay tuned for my version of that tag. Okay, so on to Friday reads. I'm actually currently reading two two books at the same time and I never do that like ever so I don't know what's going on there and they are Serafina by Rachel Hartman I am reading this with Ilsa from the book atlas and also The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness and I'm reading this with Miss Bookish Beauty and Nerdy Book Lover and I will link all of the channels below so for The Knife of Never Letting Go I'm about this far through it and the writing style, it took me a while to get used to, you know, the misspellings and kind of reading from Todd's mindset, I guess you could say. I want answers. I want answers and I will continue on with the series. I can't wait to see where this book heads because it's unlike any dystopian I've ever read. It's actually kind of like sci-fi. Yeah, I like it. Dragons and fantasy and... <sighs> It's beautifully written. I love the characters so far. I love the world building. I'm currently about 25% through this, so I'm anxious to see where it goes. Friday reads. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Let me know below if you have read any of the books in my top five of 2013. Let me know what your favorite book of the year was, and let me know what you're currently reading. I hope to see more of you in the future. Bye! And... It just flows off the tongue. No, that's stupid. Hey everyone, it really. And it's Kayla, and I'm back with I'm back, which is the fourth. Yeah, fourth. Hello.